Hello students, welcome to the induction program for this academic year 2020-21. I am going to present you about universal human values and my name is Dr. Arvind K, belonging to Electronics and Communication Engineering Department at New Horizon College of Engineering. Before starting this universal human values, let us see how to obtain knowledge. What are the sources of knowledge for us? We have basically two sources for obtaining knowledge. One is external source and one is internal source. And the external sources are books and teachers. And the internal sources are our own intellect and intuition. Now, the knowledgeable people in our previous generations or even before that, they have recorded their own knowledge in terms of books. And books are basically an indication of a collective wisdom. So, without the books, we would not have been this much progressing in this 21st century. Similarly, if it is only the books, then that is not sufficient because many of the books are written by intellectual people and at times their level will be slightly higher than our level or the normal level. So, even though plenty of books are available, teachers are also required to discuss about what is the content of the book or how to make us understand about the curriculum or the subject. So, if teachers are not there, then with only the books, we cannot have education to ourselves. So, books and teachers are two external resources. Similarly, intellect and intuition are the internal resources. Gradually with the interaction of knowledgeable people, we will develop our logical abilities and we will fill our memories with a lot of information and gradually with that, we increase our intellectual level. Over a period of time, if we cultivate good habits of learning, then we will also develop intuitive abilities. In fact, intuition is called as tuition from inside. Many times, many scientists and philosophers will get inspirations from within. There are examples that many scientists have got their solution to a particular problem during their dreams and when they wake up, they come to know that dreams are offering the solutions. So, these are the intuitive abilities or so to say God-given abilities. But intuition will not develop suddenly without any intellect and intellect will not develop suddenly without the uh, help of the external resources such as books and teachers. So, I would say that the external resources are 50 percent contributors and the internal resources are another 50 percent contributors to the accumulation of knowledge. And as such you can see each one can be of 25 percent category. For example, books can be of a 25 percent resource and teachers can be another 25 percent. Our own intellect is another 25 percent. Remaining 25 percent is the intuition. So, in this way, we can say that everything which teachers teach will not be able to make you wiser or more intellectual throughout your lifetime. There are 50 percent contributions from the external resources and another 50 percent contributions from the internal resources. I will justify this statement in the next slide. You can see this particular verse or shloka in Sanskrita. Acharyat padam adatte padam shishya swamedhaya padam sobrahmacharibhya padam kalakramenucha. This is told many centuries before by the Sanskrita philosophers or teachers. 
ஆச்சாரியார் பாதம் ஆதத்தே மீன்ஸ் ஃப்ரம் த ப்ரிசெப்டர் ஆர் ஃப்ரம் தி டீச்சர் ஆர் ஃப்ரம் தி ஆச்சாரியா வி கேன் டிரான்ஸ்லேட் த வேர்ட் ஆச்சாரியா இன் டு ப்ரொஃபஸர் ஸோ ஃப்ரம் அ ப்ரொஃபஸர் அ டீச்சர் வில் அண்டர்ஸ்டாண்ட் ஓன்லி டுவெண்ட்டி ஃபைவ் பர்சன்ட் இன் சம்ஸ்கிருதா பாதா மீன்ஸ் டுவெண்ட்டி ஃபைவ் பர்சன்ட் ஆர் ஒன் குவார்டர் ஸோ ஃப்ரம் த டீச்சர் ஆர் த ப்ரிசெப்டர் த ஸ்டூடெண்ட் வில் அண்டர்ஸ்டாண்ட் ஓன்லி டுவெண்ட்டி ஃபைவ் பர்சன்ட் ரிமைனிங் டுவெண்ட்டி ஃபைவ் பர்சன்ட் த ஸ்டூடெண்ட் வில் அண்டர்ஸ்டாண்ட் வித் ஹிஸ் ஓன் ஆர் ஹர் ஓன் இன்டெலெக்ட் பாதம் சிஷ்யா ஸ்வமேதயா பாதம் ஸ்வபிரம்மச்சாரிபிய மீன்ஸ் லேட்டர் ஆன் the remaining 25% will be understood by the student with the gradual discussion or conversation or interaction with the classmates and the last 25% will be gradually acquired as time progresses so you can see that a teacher can only help you for 25% extent because you are in touch with the teacher only for a few years in your life that too you will not be in touch with the teacher for 24 hours in a day so in your spare time you will have to use your own intellectual level for developing the logic generally in science we say 4w 1h rule what where when why and how when sir isaac newton before he was given the title called sir he was a priest in a church and and he was sitting below an apple tree when apple fell on his head and when the apple fell on his head he started asking these questions what where when why how and because of he trying to obtain the answers for all these five questions now we have gps system now we have geostationary earth orbit satellites middle earth orbit satellites low earth orbit satellites because he formulated or he discovered the laws of gravitational forces today in the physical world or in the engineering world or in the technological world we have so many facilities and we are all the way able to travel to moon also able to send our spaceships to mars also for that matter so this is basically the application of 4w 1h rule that is where i told padam shishya swamedhaya remaining padam sa brahmacharibhyah means you will have to interact with your own classmates you will have to have technical or scientific discussions with all your classmates in general students spend a lot of time discussing about movies and cricket that is fine there must be extra curricular activities there must be entertainment activities also but it does not mean that the time has to be spent only with such discussions students should find time for discussing the syllabus and the subjects and the courses which you are studying about science about engineering about technology only if that happens then gradually as time progresses you will fill up the remaining 25% so that is the meaning of this particular verse now if the meaning of this particular verse has to be fulfilled there are some prerequisites with each student what are those prerequisites you must have a learning attitude learning never ends throughout life we will keep on learning even teachers also we will keep on learning as new things come out in the technical arena or when new concepts are discovered or invented by the scientific community or the engineering community so the first one is the positive attitude learning attitude the second one is the skill now we have lot of laboratory courses also and uh, i am proud to say that we have prestigious centers of excellence also in our campus and all these are meant for developing your technical skills and we have mini project right from third semester till sixth semester and in your eighth semester we have main project all these are meant for increasing your skill level apart from that you will have to participate in workshops in conferences 
and in many such co-curricular activities and programs so that you will develop the skill. Now, when you have this learning attitude, gradually when you have to develop skills, knowledge is very much necessary. That is where we have theory courses, we have this teaching learning process where many professors are involved in taking theory classes for you. So, theory classes are for enhancing the knowledge or imparting the knowledge. Laboratory sessions and mini projects and the activity based learning activities basically for developing the technical skills. But these two can be provided to you or imparted to you only if you gradually develop a learning attitude or a positive attitude. You can see these three domains there. The attitude affects the affective domain, knowledge affects the cognitive domain and skill affects the experiential domain. In the sense, affective domain is more about feelings and cognitive domain is more about understanding and remembering and experiential domain is more about enhancing the process of understanding and remembering. For example, theory courses are basically belonging to cognitive domain. In general, cognition means recognizing, what is the word? Recognize. Recognize means already you have something stored in memory and you will recall it and you will understand it. So, cognitive domain is basically part of your memory. Now, for enhancing the storage of information in the memory, there is experience required. The experience is by means of using the body for skillful activities. Now, both of these will have effect on our affective domain. Affective domain is basically moods and feelings. That is where I told you, you should have a positive attitude or a learning attitude that affects your basic nature and character and personality. Now, gradually, attitude has a positive effect on the affective domain and in the cognitive domain, you will memorize the concepts of engineering and technology and gradually when you involve yourself, you will have experiential domain affected and you will have good knowledge, skill and attitude together as such. So that when you finish your final year engineering course, you will have a successful engineering degree with you. You can use it either for getting into a good job or getting into your own entrepreneurship or for proceeding into the higher studies as well. As I told you, learning is lifelong. We should have attitude, skill and knowledge together and it is going to affect our affective domain, cognitive domain and experiential domain. Just look at this picture for a few seconds. In the x-axis there is knowledge, in the y-axis there is awareness. And you can see those four squares there. When knowledge is less and when awareness is more, it is caution there. I know what I don't know. And when knowledge is more, awareness is more, we have certainty there. I know what I know. And when knowledge is less and awareness is also less, that is ignorance. I don't know what I don't know. And when knowledge is more but awareness is less, there is something called amnesia. I don't know what I know. So many times we will have to have lot of mental analysis or self analysis and we should have enough peace of mind so that knowledge also should be more, awareness also should be more. That is called certainty. I know what I know. Now, if you know what you know, then you have to gradually exploit whatever you know so that you can be useful to yourself, you can be useful to the society, you can be useful to the technical community as well. That is when knowledge is also more, awareness is also more. 
But let us say awareness is more. You are aware of yourself. But you have not developed that knowledge. Now knowledge is less. In that case you should have some caution. You should keep on analyzing yourself about you, what you don't know that you should be aware of. Then you will have to explore. You will have to explore those areas. Whichever areas you don't know, you will have to gradually develop the knowledge in that area. If knowledge is more and awareness is less, then that is like stuffing a lot of things forcibly into memory. Where you will not be able to recall all that what you know, know or you will not be able to recall when it is required from your memory. There is a disease called amnesia that way. Here it is uh, mentioned in that way. I don't know what I know. Now when you don't know what you know, you should have enough exposure to keep on recalling. Ultimately, knowledge has to be recalled whenever it is required. Any unused knowledge is going to be remaining submerged in the memory. So that is why I showed you about the skill and the experiential domain. Only when you keep on experiencing whatever we know, then we will be able to effectively recall or efficiently recall whatever we know. Now, lastly, when knowledge is less, when awareness is less, that is ignorance. Now, in the case of amnesia, if you want to increase your awareness, gradually you will have to expose yourself into such situations where memory recall is enhanced. But when knowledge is also less, when awareness is also less, that is called ignorance. I don't know what I don't know. That means the person lacks self-awareness also, the person lacks knowledge also. Now, you will have to experiment a lot. When you experiment a lot, gradually, theoretical as well as practical domains have to be utilized by you so that gradually you may move on to amnesia, gradually you may move on to caution, finally you will have to move on to certainty where awareness also has to be increased and knowledge also has to be increased. So how to gradually develop this where awareness and knowledge have to be at a higher level, not at a lower level. How to increase, let us see. This is called the cone of learning given by Edgar Dale in 1969 itself. There is a proverb told by Confucius here, I see and I forget, I hear and I remember, I do and I understand. What does it mean? Based on this proverb, after two weeks, we tend to remember what? Let us say you have a theoretical session or you will have a practical session. Now after two weeks, you tend to remember what? We tend to remember only 10% of what we read and 20% of what we hear, 30% of what we see and 50% of what we see and hear together, 70% of what we say and 90% of what we say and do. For example, see reading, hearing words and seeing. Now watching a movie or looking at an exhibit, watching a demonstration, seeing it done on location. That is seeing as well as hearing. Now participating in a discussion or giving a talk is 70% because we say. Doing a dramatic presentation, simulating the real experience, doing the real thing. That is we say and we do. Now you can say at the bottom of the triangle, it is called active remembrance. 70% of what we say, 90% of what we say and do. Whereas at the upper side you can see the passive remembrance. 50% of what we see and hear, 30% of what we see, 20% of what we hear, 10% of what we read. Which means what? Whatever we read, whatever we hear, whatever we see, we should be able to recall it again and again. If we have to be able to recall it again and again, we should say whatever we remember. And we should do and we should say whatever we remember. That is where there will be an effective memory recall. That is why I mentioned about activity based learning. Of course, theory courses also are required. Lab courses also are required. All are required. Without the theory courses, how can you 
gain the knowledge in the beginning itself. So, hearing, reading, seeing, all are important. But later on, you should be saying whatever you have understood. That is where we have uh, mini project presentations, we have a laboratory, viva, and uh, we encourage you to participate in technical workshops and in conferences and in many such events, technical events. So, 70% of what we say and 90% of what we say and do is going to be remembered by us. And ultimately, our future depends so only on our memory. Whatever you store in your memory, that is going to decide your future. So, that is why mostly engineering and technology is activity-based learning. And the present century itself, 21st century education itself has to be having this activity-based learning approach. Unlike the previous system of education. In any domain, there are three stages of success. The initial stage, the middle stage and the final stage. The initial stage is always an exciting phase. Whenever you take admission into the engineering course, your parents have spent their time and effort and even finance for getting you admitted into the engineering course. And for you also, it's an exciting phase. For your parents also, it's an exciting phase. And initially, it is a daring effort. And initially, there is a learning process. Provided you develop a positive attitude, you retain that learning attitude. Only then this initial stage happens successfully. Now, gradually, after about a year or after about a few months or so, you may get fed up with giving internal tests. You may get fed up with giving assignments or quizzes. But you should not. That effort should continue even in the middle stage. And that phase is called testing phase and the effort is now a desperate effort because whatever you learn, you will have to put it into practice. Only if the middle stage is successfully completed by you, then you will reach the final stage. The final stage is the perfecting stage and the effort is the determining effort. And the process is a training process means you can train your juniors. Let us say when you reach final year, you have reached a perfecting phase in these four years of engineering degree and your effort has been a determined effort for successfully and colorfully completing the engineering degree. You will be able to train your own junior students or in future when you get into a very good profession or into a business, you will be able to train your own subordinates. Maybe in future when you start your own company or an organization, you will be able to train your own employees. That is what I told. Learning is never going to end. Success is also not going to be ending as such. In case of success, there is always a milestone. You can define your own next milestone for your successful life and for successful profession. So these are the three stages of success, not only in engineering learning, in any domain for that matter. So my advice or suggestion to all of you is you should come out finally from initial stage to middle stage to the final stage. You should be developing that positive attitude, learning attitude along with enough skills and enough knowledge so that you will have a successful career also in future. Now, for that matter, what are you supposed to do in these four years of engineering? First one is study the basics. Now, I have the full form of success here. First one is study the basics. Study the basics thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly. Every now and then, keep on trying to understand the basics. Interact with the teachers. Read the books. Read the varieties of books. In our library, we have a lot of engineering books, technical books, even other area books are also available and we have good subscription to all types of technical magazines and you will have to interact with your classmates also, you will have to discuss the basics, study the basics thoroughly, make the foundation very strong. This is 
first yes in success next understand the concepts once you study the basics you will have to relate them together as i told you about 4 w 1 h rule what where when why how just studying is not enough you will have to relate all the basics so that you will understand the concepts of science engineering and technology in whichever branch you are in the next c in success is create the methodologies once you study the basics and once you understand the concepts you will have to develop your own methodologies of your own memory enhancement how do you remember these things effectively and how do you really implement them in your laboratory courses or in projects for that each of you should have your own methodologies in fact all of us are uniquely different there is again one more subhashita in sanskrita pinde pinde matir bhinnah kunde kunde navam payah jatav jatav navacharah nava vani mukhe mukhe means head to head intelligence is different pond to pond the taste of the water is different caste to caste the lifestyle or the culture is different and from each throat a different type of speech is coming out each one's voice is uniquely different each one's physical appearance is uniquely different we are all uniquely made by nature or by god so to say we are uniquely designed and manufactured so each of us have our own style of learning our own style of remembering so each of us should develop our own methodologies for memory storage and memory recall because ultimately our future depends on whatever is there in our memory so you will have to create the methodologies next you have to cultivate these habits of learning in general when students come into the engineering degree they get into many bad habits that should not be so many times we see that students get into many types of other habits which will affect their own life which will affect their own learning their own career and it is a cause of pain for you also for your parents also at times for your teachers also at times for the society also so don't develop any bad habits as such cultivate the habits of learning 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 only and a lifelong there must be a learning ability attitude yes you see see coming to e let us say when you cultivate the habits of learning gradually you educate yourself and your friends you will have to keep on educating yourself and whatever you learn you can educate your friends i have told you the shloka right आचार्या पाद आदत्ते पाद शिष्य स्वेधय पाद सौ ब्रह्मचारीभ्य पाद काल क्रमेण च पाद सौ ब्रह्मचारीभ्य मीन यू लव टू हेव सच कंस्ट्रक्टिव यूजफुल डिस्कशन विद युअर फ्रेंड्स ऑलसो दट वे यू एजुकेट युअर सेल्स एंड यू एजुकेट युअर ओन फ्रेंड्स नेक्स्ट स्पेशल इन पर्टिक्युलर एरिया फॉर एक्सापल इन एन इंजीनियरिंग कोर्स देर आर मेनी ब्रांचेस in whichever branch you are in each branch will have four years of serious study and approximately about 50 courses are there i am telling approximately about 50 courses in a four years engineering degree all these 50 courses some are relevant to each other some may be slightly different from each other now you cannot be an expert in all these areas when you come to the final year degree then you will know that what are all opportunities are available in each branch for that matter now you will have to select a particular area and you will have to specialize in that that is where from be we have mtech and from mtech we have phd what does it mean from a bachelor of engineering course there is a master of engineering or master of technology engineering basically means study of the engines technology basically means technic plus logos means applying the concepts for uh, developing the methods for designing and manufacturing of the engines 
so that way after be you can be having me or ms or m tech and afterwards you can pursue phd so that way b is a larger domain whereas m tech or me or ms is a specialization in a particular area and pursuit of doctorate is going deeper into a particular topic itself that way you will have to specialize in particular area we cannot know everything of everything we can only know something of everything and we should know everything of something we cannot know everything of everything so you will have to specialize in a particular area and then the last one last yes is sponsor people alike s u c c e s s study understand create cultivate educate specialize sponsor what is the meaning of sponsor you will have to make somebody as good as you or maybe better than you maybe best also now in general we teachers we want students to be like us in the sense the way in which we have developed our career we have accumulated the knowledge and we are right now delivering the content whatever we know we understand and we also keep experimenting we also keep learning we also keep progressing in the same manner we want our students also to continuously adopt this teaching learning methodology in their life it is not that well, if somebody becomes a guru he will have only shishyas that guru should be making those shishyas as good as himself or herself or better than himself or herself that is called sponsoring which basically means intelligence is always not individual it is collective wisdom is not actually individual it is collective that is where i mentioned about the books in the beginning as one of the external resources what are these books basically books are the record of the wisdom of some particular authors so that way the knowledge is going to be stored as books or as many other resources and that is going to utilize for the forthcoming generations that is the meaning of sponsor so i have given you the full form of success now i hope you will implement all these principles in your life in your studies the core theory of success is first thing is quality of relationship then the quality of collective thinking then the quality of actions then the quality of results human beings are not always alone human beings are in a team always society is basically a collection of human beings there are basically multiple teams there and each team should have a good relationship now you should have a good relationship with yourself first then good relationship with your parents and your family members then you should have a good relationship with your teachers with your classmates in future you should have a good relationship with your fellow colleagues and it goes on it is always the quality of relationship and then it is a quality of collective thinking when we are in a team how do we enhance ourselves how do we improvise ourselves depends on the collective thinking now based on the collective thinking goals will be set and based on the goals the quality of actions and based on the quality of actions how we perform the action based on that what results are obtained based on the results again relationships will improve and the cycle will go on like this this is the core theory of success so having just a knowledge is not enough we should have positive relationships very good communication skills very good interaction with the people all that is very much important for success in life so if this is the case how do we improvise let us see what is basically goal i have my own some definitions of these words which i have put it here goal basically means gaining overall achievement in life now what is the meaning of gaining overall achievement in life 
we can have personal goals relational goals professional goals social goals intellectual goals spiritual goals i have learned this from my mentor dr bharat chandra i had attended his workshop few decades before and whatever i learned from him i have implemented to some extent or to the maximum extent in my own life so we should have personal goal how we should be in our own life everybody should have a personal goal we also should have a relational goal in the sense how our relation should be with the people with the family members with the parents with the teachers with the classmates and how society thinks about us that is relational goal we should obviously have a professional goal we should always aspire for good grades in our courses and good placements or good business opportunities in future or good entrepreneurships or even a good higher studies also we should always have a professional goal because ultimately profession is going to gradually give us a comfortable lifestyle or a livelihood for that matter finally we should have a social goal also let us say we reach this personal relation and professional goal we should be contributors to the society we should be helping the underprivileged to some extent there is something called csr corporate social responsibility many corporate companies are taking up the social responsibility as well that is part of the social goal gradually we should have an intellectual goal we should always keep applying this formula 4w 1h and it is not just for engineering it is not just for technology it is for our own life as such only when we keep questioning we keep trying to get the answers in the bible as jesus christ has told ask and you shall receive seek and you shall obtain knock and it shall be opened we should have intellectual goal finally we should have spiritual goal what is that which is making our mind to work how mind is actually working and how body is created by nature in a such a beautiful design and ultimately what is god or who is god and is god really available to us can we have the grace of god we should have a spiritual goal spirituality is also a great science as such if people understand the spiritual principles they will really have a highly satisfying life as such so if at all you attain all these six achievements in life then that is called overall achievement in life that is the full form of goal what is fate many people think fate is in the palm on the lines of the palm some people think fate is in the natal chart fate is basically there in the astrology some people think fate is already written on the forehead no these are all blind faiths to some extent there is a truth in astrology and in palmistry but that is not fate fate is faith actions thoughts environment faith on yourself faith on the system and based on the faith you will involve in actions based on the actions you will have such thoughts and thoughts and actions together will be your environment many times the environment induces you into the thoughts and actions and you will develop the faith system all these four things are intricately connected it is the faith then actions then thoughts then environment these four are intricately connected now we provide you a positive environment to learn here and we induce positive thoughts in you you will have to involve in positive actions provided you develop faith on us you have faith on yourself that is going to be the fate it is not dependent on your natal chart it is not dependent on the lines on your hand it is not written on your forehead at all please understand fate is faith actions thoughts and environment what is team together everyone achieves more
As I told you earlier, human beings are always team. Human beings cannot always be individuals or alone. People who become alone, they become alone in general at the end of life to search for the spiritual facets of life. They are different people. Even when some people are monks, even though they are in the spiritual domain, they also will have their own team for pursuing the spiritual goal also. So that way, team is always together, everyone achieves more. That is where I showed you the core theory of success. I showed you the cycle there. What is luck? Many people think luck and destiny are again there, again they are defined. No. Luck is labor under correct knowledge. Obtain correct knowledge based on the knowledge, work on your own or work with a team lifelong. And you will create such lucky situations for yourself. That is basically luck. At times there can be a chance. There is a probability that you may come in contact with some positive person, some good situation in life. That is called chance, not luck. Luck is basically labor under correct knowledge. What is time? Time is the infinite moment of energy. Stephen Hawking has written a beautiful book called Brief History of Time. In your spare time, read such very useful books. There is one more very useful book called You Can Win, written by Shiv Khera. Wonderful book. In fact, I have been inspired by that particular book many times. You read these two books in your spare time. One is A Brief History of Time, written by Stephen Hawking. One more book called You Can Win by Shiv Khera. These are wonderful two books. So, coming back to time. Time is multidimensional. Moon is revolving around Earth. Earth is revolving around Sun. Sun itself is moving in the Milky Way galaxy. Galaxy itself is moving. In that way, time on moon is different, time on earth is different, time in the galaxy itself is different. Each one is larger than the previous one. So, time is basically the infinite moment of energy. If you understand this, will you really waste the time? I will show you here. If you pass the time, you will get failed by the time. If you waste the time, you will get wasted by the time. Because time is the infinite moment of energy. Time and tide waits for no one is the very famous proverb. You should not pass the time, you should utilize the time. If you pass the time by chit chatting, by using heavy social media interaction, by simply coming to the campus and not really being attentive in your courses, that way, gradually you will get failed by the time. You should not pass the time, you should utilize the time. You should not waste the time. If you waste the time, you will get wasted by the time. It is not that we are wasting the time or we are passing the time. It is the time which is failing us or wasting us in the long run. My dear students, please understand this. Please utilize your time in a highly positive, effective way. And respect your parents' intentions and respect your parents' financial investments also for your education. And respect the complete institution, the teaching institution, the teaching system. Respect the whole of this campus of ours which is giving you beautiful facilities for learning and upgrading yourself. I am coming back to some of the last few tips because our intention is to give you an indication about the universal human values. What is right? What is wrong? It is very difficult to define what is right, what is wrong at times because sometimes religions come into picture, sometimes cultures come into picture. In many different ways, people will have many arguments about what is right what is wrong. 
but basically it is a common sense common sense is right is based in the truth wrong is incorrect it is not based in the truth right is always correct right is moral based in natural law wrong is immoral not based in natural law for example right is actions based in it do not result in harm to other sovereign beings whereas wrong is actions based in it result in harm to other sovereign beings so what is right what is wrong is basically a common sense if if whatever you do causes harm to others then that is wrong whatever you does not come cause harm to others then that is right and if at all whatever you do if it becomes beneficial to yourself and to others that is what you will have to keep doing so many times what is right what is wrong is a common sense we need not get into religious arguments or we need not get into cultural arguments about all those things that is only justifications of those people who keep on doing those things wrong is wrong even if everyone is doing it for example if people keep causing harm to others physically and mentally then wrong is wrong even if everyone is doing it right is right even if only you are doing it please understand this that is when i told right and wrong are basically common sense whatever is harmful is wrong whatever is harmless is right whatever is beneficial is also right no one is born as perfect but no one can choose to remain as imperfect many times we do some wrong things without our knowledge at times many times we may do wrong things without our knowledge at times with our own ignorance we may do some wrong things that way then we can say we are not perfect as such yes no one is born as perfect but if we keep justifying whatever wrong things we are doing then we are remaining imperfect as such so no one is born as perfect that is agreed but no one can choose to remain as imperfect keeping on doing the wrong things we will have to improvise upon ourselves actually god evolved human beings from apes with the intention that human beings will live better than apes isn't it human beings have to live better than all other birds and animals on this earth but are we living that way we should ask ourselves many times many people are living worse than animals and birds also i'll show you the examples in the next slide there are these six enemies kama krodha lobha moha mada matsara lust wrath greed infatuation vanity and jealousy these are there in the human beings these may be found to some percentage even with the other birds and animals but not up to the extent in which it is shown or it is utilized in the human beings are human beings living better than animals and birds that is the question now if human beings keep on developing these six enemies these are called shed vairis or shed ripus kama krodha lobha moha mada matsara or lust wrath greed infatuation vanity jealousy these are the six enemies now there are eight arrogances which human beings have dhanamada vidyamada kulamada roopamada yavvanamada balamada parivaramada adhikaramada arrogance of money arrogance of knowledge arrogance of caste arrogance of appearance arrogance of youth arrogance of strength arrogance of family arrogance of position these are the eight arrogances and these eight arrogances became the downfall even for hitler even for alexander there are so many such examples of how people became arrogant and how people had a downfall they caused the problem to themselves and they caused the problems to the society as such there is a very thin line between arrogance and confidence we should always be confident in achieving our goals but we should not become arrogant in the process because arrogance is going to cause a problem for oneself and to the others that is when i told you are human beings living better than other animals and birds god evolved human beings to be living better than apes 
आर वी लिविंग दैट वे वी शुड आस्क अवर सेल्स दैट इज वाई आई टोल्ड नो वन इज बॉर्न एज परफेक्ट बट नो वन कैन कीप ऑन ट्राइंग टू रिमेन इम परफेक्ट ऑल्सो so what is personality personality is who we are and what we do when everybody is watching but character is who we are and what we do when nobody is watching there is a very subtle difference between them i have taken it from this particular website idlehearts.com beautifully they have put it personality is who we are and what we do when everybody is watching when we are in front of others when we are in the society or when we are in the group we show ourselves that way but basically character is what who we are and what we do when nobody is watching when we are alone in what way we feel comfort with ourselves that is what is character watch your thoughts for they become your words watch your words for they become your actions watch your actions for they become your habits watch your habits for they become your character watch your character for they become your destiny destiny or fate is dependent on the thoughts then on the words which you use then on the actions which you perform then on the habits which you calculate cultivate then on the character and that is your destiny your character is made by means of your habits habits are made by means of your actions actions are made by means of words words are basically made by means of your thoughts so this is what brahadaranyaka upanishad indicates and swami shivananda explains it as thought leads to action action leads to habit habit leads to character character leads to destiny your character is going to be your destiny what is body birth of divine you because the body is designed and manufactured by nature and by god i should say because body is planned with the two hands two legs in each hand you have five fingers in the head you have two eyes two ears you have nose to breathe two nostrils and you have mouth and in the mouth you have teeth these are all well planned well designed they are not of a human design they are of a nature's design or god's design so body is basically divine body is birth of divine you what is mind move inward now discover you will have to analyze your own thoughts you will have to analyze your own words actions habits for that you will have to keep your mind pure and clean because mind and memory are intricately related whatever you retain in your memory that only is going to be expressed by you so whatever you retain in memory or store in memory that is through mind only so if you have to understand mind you will have to move inward and now discover at times you should remain calm quiet at times you may have to meditate to regulate your thoughts to have better focus that is why mind is called move inward now discover what is soul source of unconditional love nature is unconditionally loving its own beings that is how you can see when a child is born in the mother's breast milk is produced it is not by means of the mother's intention nature is producing that way nature is outside also nature is inside also and nature has a soul soul is basically divine that soul is source of unconditional love i mentioned you about the spiritual goals right gaining overall achievement in life i mentioned you six areas and the last one was a spiritual goal spiritual goal is to get in touch with the soul which is basically divine and it is a source of unconditional love finally life is what living in further evolution physical evolution has been happening by nature now human beings have to mentally evolve you have to keep on evolving yourself you have to keep on making yourself better and better and better that is what is life living in further evolution that is when i told learning never ends 
So you love doing it. That is part of your passion and mission. The world needs it. That is part of mission and vocation. You are paid for it. That is part of vocation and a profession. And you are great at it. That is part of your profession as well as passion. Now there is a small ellipse at the center. That is the purpose of your life. If the purpose of your life is matching all these four circles, passion, mission, vocation, profession, then you have achieved your complete purpose. That means what? You have gained overall achievement in life. So, mission and vocation are going to have delight and excitement. Whereas, passion and profession are going to have satisfaction and comfort. Now, this is the principle called as Ikigai. It is the Japanese principle, Japanese secret to a long and happy life. It is called Ikigai principle. So, if you want to have delight, excitement, satisfaction and comfort, you should have mission, vocation, profession, passion. All of them must be together. Then, the purpose of life is fulfilled. Coming to the last few slides. Mahatma Gandhi has told seven dangers to human virtue. Wealth without work, pleasure without conscience, knowledge without character, business without ethics, science without humanity, religion without sacrifice, politics without principle. These are the seven dangers to human virtue. These are the universal human values. You will have to reverse these things. Wealth with work. Pleasure with conscience, knowledge with character, business with ethics, science with humanity, religion with sacrifice, politics with principle. Gradually, we all have to reverse these things in our own way so that human virtue will not be under danger. We will have to salute Mahatma Gandhi for mentioning these seven things. An old Cherokee told his grandson, my son, there is a battle between two wolves inside us all. One is evil, it is anger, jealousy, greed, resentment, inferiority, lies and ego. The other is good, it is joy, peace, love, hope, humility, kindness, empathy and truth. The boy thought about it and asked, Grandfather, which wolf wins? The old man quietly replied, the one you feed. That means, it's always our choice. To improvise ourselves. Bhagavad Gita says, Uddhrayat atmana atmanam na atmanam avasadayet atmai mahi atmano bandhuhu atmai varipuhu atmanaha. You will have to elevate yourself. You should not degrade yourself. If you elevate yourself, you are your best friend. If you degrade yourself, you are your enemy. Please understand this verse from the Bhagavad Gita, my dear students. Your life does not get better by chance, it gets better by choice. There is nothing called chance or luck or fate or destiny that way as people generally believe. Your life does not get better by chance, it always gets better by choice. Please remember that. Be careful to choose. Be careful about your habits. Be careful about your thoughts and words and actions. With this, I come to the end of this presentation. I once again welcome all of you to our great institution, New Horizon College of Engineering. And I wish you all the best for your future studies and learning and career. Wishing you all the best. I end my presentation for today. Take care of yourself. Goodbye.